Hey, how's it going, you guys? So today I'll be doing my review of my Motorola Zoom. I've had it for a couple weeks now, so I think I pretty much know everything there is going on for it currently. Uh, we'll jump right into it with the hardware of the Zoom. You'll see here on the front we have a 10.1 inch display with a resolution of 1280 by 800. At the top you have a 2 megapixel front facing camera. On the side here you'll notice the LED notification strip. On the bottom there's also another LED that only lights up during uh, charging when the device is fully powered down. You have the Motorola and Verizon logos. On the left side we have the volume rocker up and down. On the top we have the SIM card tray as well as the micro SD card slot. We have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. There's nothing on the right side of the device. On the bottom, there's the micro USB, mini HDMI, the dock connector, the proprietary power, and the microphone. On the back, we have stereo speakers, as well as a 5 megapixel autofocus camera that records 720p HD video, dual LED flash, and the power button and more logos. Uh, as far as build quality goes, it's really nice. The back is an aluminum that's matte black and uh, the top here is a soft touch plastic that's where they have all their radios. Uh, the screen here is nice, it's responsive, but it's very 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 glossy. It's almost mirror-like sometimes. Uh, as far as gripes go, as far as design, the the volume rocker here can be a little bit hard to find and they are a little hard to push sometimes. But thankfully you really only have to push them once and then you can adjust it on the screen with the slider. Uh, and I also don't like the placement of the 3.5mm headphone jack. I think it's kind of a dumb place to put it right in the middle at the top. So you end up having to drape your headphones around the back and out the bottom it just it's weird uh, but the main attraction here with the zoom is definitely Android 3.0 on another note the power button being on the back it's actually not bad when you're holding it like you should with the tablet with both hands your index finger just kinda naturally rests on it and so it's really nice to click it and it comes on but it can be a little bit of a pain when you're on a flat surface here because you have to lift it up. Now here you got the new lock screen. You can see you get the time as well as this here. You can touch it and then all you have to do is drag it to anywhere, any of the sides of the larger circle to unlock it. And here you see the home screen. Uh, now there's no physical buttons on the front of the zoom so all your moving around between stuff is handled by these buttons here at the bottom. You have the back button, your home button, and this new multitasking button, which is really nice. It shows your five most recent opened applications. It gives you a little preview of what was going on as well as the icon. Along the bottom here you'll notice you got the time and then you have your status indicators. You got your wireless signal strength and your battery. Uh, battery life has been stellar, I have to say, with the Zoom. I'm easily getting between 8 and 10 hours. Uh, I actually haven't charged this since yesterday, so I still have about a 70% charge. Down here at the bottom, you'll also notice you get your notifications. They're no longer a pull-down from the top, and instead they'll pop up down here at the bottom, but they still remain as unintrusive as they always have been. You can click on any one of these, so say, well, one just popped up. And you'll see when you click on it, it loads you into whatever application it's notifying you about. Now this is one of the uh, applications that has not yet been updated for Honeycomb. And so you'll notice that you get a fourth button down here at the bottom. This is This acts as your menu button that has been, that is on all the other Android phones. As far as the built-in Honeycomb applications, they're actually all very nice. 
uh, if we take a look at Gmail here, for example, you'll notice that they are you're running a new fragments API, so they can have multiple things going on in an activity. So you'll see you'll get your labels and your things, your inbox over here, and then you get your emails over here. And then you got this new context sensitive menu bar action bar at the top here with uh, different options that will change depending on what you're doing. You see here we get search, compose, refresh, and then the menu button right here. But if we select one, you'll notice they change to change labels, mark as red, star, archive, and delete. And then you can just press done. Now if we go into one of these, you'll see everything slides over and you can view your email over here. And again, the buttons along the top have changed a little bit, so now you got search, compose, archive, delete, and menu again. And now to go back to the beginning of any application, you can touch the top icon. And here in Gmail, you can also switch easily between multiple inboxes. The browser in Honeycomb has also been updated quite nicely. You'll notice you get tabs now. It's very Chrome-like on your computer. So you can open tabs. I believe you can open up to 16 at a time. You get your back, forward, refresh buttons, as well as your address bar. At the uh, Over here, you can press the star to bookmark. You can name it, change the address. You can choose where it goes. You can add it to your home screen, add it to your general bookmarks folder, or any other folder. You can't create folders, but if you have folders synced over from your uh, Chrome on your computer, you can save bookmarks in here to those folders. You also get your search button, and here is your bookmarks. You'll notice very nicely laid out. You can scroll here, you get thumbnails, and then down here you'll see is where you get your folders. And you can view your history, add a bookmark, go home, stuff like that. Here you also get the other menu. You can open a new incognito tab, find a page, find on page, share the page, view your downloads, or go into settings. As far as the market and applications go on Honeycomb, the market itself has gotten a very nice update. It looks very good. It's well laid out on the tablet. You get categories over here. You get your featured applications here. And you get this sort of carousel over here that scrolls through different featured apps. You can search the market. You can view apps that you have installed on the device. And this is where it will also show any apps that have updates. You'll also see that once you go into them, it's a lot more graphical. You get the information on the application over here. And you get, they can add a header image right here. You get the description, what's new. You can scroll through uh, screenshots. And if they have a video of it, you can click the video and you can jump into the YouTube app to watch whatever video that may be. You can also view reviews and view related. And if the developer has any other applications, they'll show up over here so you can view those. Uh, overall, there aren't a ton of Honeycomb apps yet, but that's to be expected. Honeycomb's only been out for a few weeks now, so you obviously have to give developers a little bit of time. I imagine that in the coming months, there will be more than enough. Uh, let's see, the, in Honeycomb, the music player has finally gotten a much needed update. As soon as it decides to load here, there we go. You can see here, this is the album view. You get nice 3D effects when you scroll to the top. Uh, as well as this really nice new and recent cover flow sort of thing here that you can scroll through and select an album and then select a song and it will begin playing.
As far as speakers on the Zoom, they're good. They're not amazing. They're about on par with other laptop speakers. So they'll certainly get the job done if you don't have a pair of headphones on you at the time, but you'll definitely want a good pair of headphones if you plan on doing anything, listening to anything real and significant. As far as cameras on the Zoom go, the back one is a 5 megapixel. As I said, it records 720p video. Its uh, image quality is decent. It's not the greatest. It's not the worst. Uh, it's certainly not going to replace your regular camera. But if you have your tablet with you and you want to snap something real quick, they're certainly more than adequate. Along here, you'll see in the app, you get zoom in, zoom out. You get flash, white balance, color effects, scene modes, as well as settings, and then you get your shutter button. The front-facing camera is 2 megapixels. It's just uh, like the back. It's decent. It's really not that great. It's really only just good enough for a video chat. Uh, overall, I'm, I've been impressed with the Zoom. Things are generally pretty smooth. I would say this is probably the smoothest uh, version of Android I have ever played with. It certainly helps the dual core Tegra 2 processor uh, and the one gig of RAM. Uh, but overall, you know, I'm really impressed. It's certainly not perfect. It does need a lot of work, but I'm very happy with my purchase and I imagine that as time goes on it will only get better. So there you go guys, there's my review. I will be doing more videos to go more in depth with the various Honeycomb applications. There's obviously a lot. Uh, if there's anything you'd like to see, let me know and I'll try to get to those. Thanks a lot.